If you are working or editing in DaVinci Resolve and you haven't explored yet the possibilities with Fusion titles, templates, transitions, all of that, you're missing out. And it's a better time to get started now than ever. With the rollout of DaVinci Resolve 18, tons of users are seeing vastly improved performance with the built-in titles you get for free in Resolve. So in this video, I'm going to very quickly walk you through um, just a little bit of what is available if you wanna get your feet wet, uh, starting with uh, titles and effects and generators in Resolve, both ones that you already have for free in Resolve and then some outside resources. And I'm also showing off um, my one tip. If you wanna take it a step further and start learning learning more about how a lot of these resources function and how you can even build your own. Let's start real simple with titles. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve 18 on the edit page. And if you have your effects library is open, that's no longer called effects library. Number one, just a little button that says effects. That's cool. That will open up this window down here where you will have uh, your toolbox and inside that you will have titles. You have a few uh, plain text titles and importantly, the text effect and the text plus effect. Those are very different things, but underneath that you have fusion titles. Here you will have the included free titles you've received and any uh, general titles that you create or grab from outside sources. If you put them in the general titles folder, this is where they will sit. Like this whole pack I have here that I picked up from JRTV, another amazing YouTube creator. And I can just select any of these, drag it to my timeline Mouse over it and you will see the motion and important for all of these effects over here in the inspector, which you could toggle on and off. Under video, you will have either title or generator or what kind of effect it is here. And then all the custom controls set up here, like the line color and then this text here. So you can change this to anything you want. And you can see I've toggled off my cache here and that title plays back full time, no issues. Really cool. And you could come in here um, and change anything like that color, if you wanted it to be this bright pink instead. Cool, but let's take it a step further with one of the included free generators. This one is really cool. Uh, if you click over to generators, underneath fusion generators, you will have contours. I've dragged that over here and you can see that by default, it's this nice sort of like tiered wavy line. That's cool, but you click that, open it up in the inspector and at the top you see you have six included versions. Now I'm gonna click through these and keep in mind, this is just six versions of this one effect. I'm not drastically changing uh, what's being included, just how what's being included is interacting with each other. It'll make a little more sense soon. But you can see if I click through these versions, then all of a sudden we just have this like lined page texture or this really cool sort of like topological map. I don't know if that was the right word. Topology? That's elevation, right? This one looks really cool if you come down to shape and increase the movement speed a little bit, movement rate, then it just sort of like, oof, I like this one a lot. You can change uh, the color of the shadow and different things, uh, it's cool. Number four is this line effect that you can change a whole lot how that works. A different mirrored effect for five, and six is this bullseye. And the controls change for all of those as well. And if you don't believe me that this is really just six versions of one effect, here is how you can tell. That's by using my big tip for this video. If you want to learn more, especially if you want to get started creating your own effects, then inside the inspector, once you have your clip selected, right by all of these custom controls at the top, right by the title, you have this icon here and that will load that instance of the effect or title or generator into the fusion page. If I go back to that, uh, this effect I like a whole lot here and click that button to load it into the fusion page. Here you will see you have our media out where whatever you do on the fusion page, it pipes back into a media out. That's how you can see it on the edit page. But I also have this group of nodes here that says contours. And if I double click that, you will see that this entire effect is really these four nodes. And if I click back on that main group, then you see I have all those same controls over in the inspector. And if I click back to any of these other versions, those nodes don't change. It's just the specific settings on those nodes that do. So I can even go to this first fast noise. This is where all of these effects start. And if I click along those versions, you can see how that noise is changing. And just this different pattern of black going to white is driving all of these changes that you see acted upon in different ways later. Fusion is cool. 
And just by diving into a relatively simple generator like this that consists entirely of four nodes, you can start to learn a whole, whole lot. And again, this is a free included generator in Resolve. You might think it's crazy complicated, but just click that button, load it into the Fusion page, and you can begin to see what's really going on. You can always click back to the edit page here. And next is where this starts to get really exciting because you can learn from these included uh, like generators and effects and titles. If I go back to that title I dropped in earlier, I can click that same button and you see that this effect will load into the Fusion page. I open up that box. And this is actually quite a bit more complicated than that generator, but you can select any node and press one or two to pull that up on the viewer. And you can start to piece together if you go through how this is all made. Wild. This is ending in a keyframe stretcher. Keyframe stretchers are very cool, very powerful. I have a video all about those. Um, a lot of the power and flexibility of the included free titles comes from this keyframe stretcher node. And I only originally learned about it by using this method, by opening them up, seeing that, hey, they all end in this keyframe stretcher node. What does that do? Tons of cool stuff. But all of the included titles and effects and transitions, you can crack open and see how they are actually made on the edit page. But not just the free included titles and effects. You can also do this to a ton of external resources. Not all of them, but a lot. Quick side note on that, because uh, when someone packages up a macro or an effect to be used, especially on the edit page in Fusion, they have a choice of setting that as a group operator, which is what we saw earlier, um, that yellow group that you can then double click to expand, or just setting it to a macro operator where a user will have any of those same end controls, but will be unable to double click to open it up. There are some stuff you can do in the code, but that is a little advanced, but it's just something to be aware of if you are pulling external resources. Luckily, next we are going to look at one specific specific resource I pulled from the sponsor for this video, Motion Array. Motion Array is an unlimited download marketplace for creators. With either a monthly or an annual license, you get access to over 80,000 different projects, templates, presets, and stock music and video clips to completely transform your work. I really like the motion graphics section of their video library. There's tons of really striking and abstract stuff that make it really easy to get inspired. They have a limited selection you can try for free, and if you click the link in the description, you can get $50 off an annual license. There are templates for Premiere, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, and importantly for us, DaVinci Resolve. From logo reveals to text animation to just animated assets, including this YouTube call to action that we are just about to look at. Thank you Motion Array for sponsoring this video. So say you've dragged in this YouTube call to action animation, you've tossed in your own picture and background image there, maybe even customized the text a bit. You have taken full advantage of all of these custom controls in the inspector. But you can always go one step further, either for customization or education. Scroll up, you have that magic icon there, you click it and it loads up that effect in the Fusion page. You can see it has these two media in because it is pulling both that background image and that profile picture. But you can double click that macro tool and see what you're working with. Especially with pulling in any external tools like some of mine that we will touch on just a bit later, you're always gonna be rolling the dice a bit on what will happen when you open up this group. How did the author of any of these effects uh, organize or name or structure their effects? You're rolling the dice a little bit. But again, that ability to scroll in and select any of these nodes and just toss them up on the viewer and then click around this node tree as more things are added to each other. It is pretty cool and relatively intuitive to just click through, see what's coming in with each new merge, where new assets are being added. And you can change anything here or again, remember, you can always click on that macro tool level to have all the same controls you have on the edit page. You might need to pace yourself a bit if you really wanna learn from some of these external tools because a lot of them will be complex to get a very specific look. That contours effect we look at was a bit of an anomaly because it was very cool and very smart and whoever made that, they're, they're very good at what they do. But like I said, it is up to whoever puts these effects together, how easy it is for you to comb through. But here on my channel, I have made the commitment that all of my free and paid products you will be able to fully open and explore in the Fusion page. Like my last big release, Proto. Proto is this big energy effect here I have just on some text. But of course, we can change this to uh, lots of different shapes. 
change up the text, fully customizable. It has several included presets as well that all look crazy and you can customize even more. And I dropped this over this really cool footage I grabbed from Motion Array. But like everything else we looked at again, I can scroll up, open that in the Fusion page, double click to open that group, and you can see this is Proto. It's available. Do I really recommend Proto as a learning resource? Not for most people. It is complex because it's doing lots of cool stuff. But this is to demonstrate that you have such a wide range of learning tools. You can start with some of the included text presets up to crazy stuff like Proto. And the last thing I want to mention is something I've talked about in a very early video. Again, you have all of these effects on the edit page, but a lot of people don't know this. Um, I'm going to open up a blank Fusion comp here. So I have a blank Fusion composition. And the Fusion page has its own effects library. And in there, I'm going to open that up and then go to Templates Fusion. Fusion has its own set of free included templates. You can look at lens flares and particles and lots of wild stuff. I have a video all about this. Some of you might seen. One of my favorites is in motion graphics. It's this radar to effect. You just drag and drop to the timeline. This doesn't come in with that same group structure, but instead you see all the raw nodes by itself. I can connect that to the media out. And when I preview that, you see I have this really cool radar effect with this sweeping bar and these particles coming towards the center. And when they cross a certain boundary, they turn red and the bar makes them glow. It's pretty intense. And this preset was foundational for me to understand a lot of fusion basics. The node tree is, I think, surprisingly simple. You can select any of these nodes and just move down the node tree as you start to see where it gets split up, duplicated, circleized coordinate space, very powerful. And then you have all the particles coming in in that particle system. Very small side note with this, but again, just to reiterate that point, there is so much you can learn about fusion just by poking around and by opening up some of the free included assets you have in Resolve or grabbing some projects from maybe your favorite YouTuber or a resource like Motion Array. This is gonna be a lot less intimidating than just going through a standard intro to Fusion course on YouTube or anywhere else, even though I do have one of those videos as well. But something like this will just be way more fun. Fusion is very exciting. I want lots more people to dive in. And I think looking at and dissecting presets like this is an amazing place to start.